Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be doing a spark plug change in the 2016 Passat 1.8 TSI. Um, it's due, it's supposed to be done about 40 to 60,000 miles. I'm sitting at 70,000. I cannot verify if the plugs have been changed, but we're gonna change them out today. I'm gonna to show you how as well. I'm also gonna show you the tools you're gonna to need, very simple tools, and the plugs that I'm gonna be using for this job. Let's go. So here are the basic tools that you're going to need for this job real quickly. Obviously, you're going to need the spark plugs. These are the Laser Platinums by NGK. These are recommended for this particular car, the 1.8 TSI. You're going to need a torque wrench. You're going to need a 5 8 spark plug puller. It's magnetic. You can get the ones with the rubber if you like, but I just happen to have one that's magnetic. It really helps to pull the spark plug out of the, the deep well. You're going to need a 3 8 ratchet, a 10 millimeter socket you're going to need a flathead screwdriver for the clips and i'm going to go the extra mile and use some dielectric grease that's just to put around the some certain points on the coils oh one more thing you're going to need this a gap gauge tool uh, you want to be careful with these spark plugs because they are very sensitive to the electrode so it's just basically there i've already tested them they all measure out it's supposed to be 0.032 inch uh, gap so they are, they're correct. So we have an engine cover here, it's very simple. There are four, four attachments here underneath and you just gently pull it up on that, like that. It comes out, one, two, three, four, on these posts here. Okay, so just set that aside. You have your four coils, underneath those are the spark plugs, but first we need to release this electrical connection here and then uh, release these 10 millimeter bolts, pull the coils out and do the plugs. All right, so now we wanna loosen the four ground wires. Pull them back. So you shouldn't have them very tight, just nice and snug. So just take that off like that, and just set it back. So do that with all of them, very simple. So next you want to get in here. You don't want to break them, so you want to be very careful. Just kind of pry this piece here up a little bit and then pull on the coil itself, on the connection itself, actually. Do the same thing. Like that, so they come loose. Do all four. So when you get them all disconnected and released, you wanna kind of pull on it at the same time. But your problem is you have a wire that's connected by a zip tie over here. It's just the zip tie. Just cut that zip tie off and then everything should just pull out nicely so you can get it out of the way. That's all we're trying to do here. So you really just want to leave yourself enough room to work to be able to pull these coils out one at a time. So that's good enough. This is connected here. You, you have another connection underneath here. You can actually reach around and disconnect that, but I'm not gonna do that. I think we have enough room to get these things out. So once you get your wiring harness here, kind of where you can move it around and manipulate it, we have plenty of room. Now we have a second 10 millimeter, four of them, that the ground came off of. So all we need to do to get the coils off is just release that. So be careful with these. These are the ones that can strip really easily, especially when you're going back in with them. Just be mindful of that. All right, so they're pretty long. Set that aside. Your coil should just wiggle right out. I've heard stories, some of them are really hard to get out, but you just have to work with it a little bit. And again, we're dealing with 70,000 miles here. I don't know if these plugs have been changed in the past, but that wasn't too bad, okay? That's it. It's dry, but it looks good. This looks really good actually so i'm going to talk about what i'm going to do with the dielectric grease after we get all these out and start putting them back in but yeah that's all you do do it for each one just make sure this wiring harness isn't in your way if you wanted to again you could disconnect more stuff and pull it all the way back but i see no need to do that i'm kind of an efficient person so i'm not trying to disassemble the whole motor all right so what i like to do when i get all the coils out they all popped out fairly easy, so that's a good sign. Um, 
doesn't seem to be any anything odd looking any burn spots anything like that I like to take a very clean cloth and I just like to clean around this just a little bit just be careful don't get anything inside I like to wipe these down and what I did is I laid the coils down because I'm gonna wipe each one off they're really really clean I'm surprised but I just want to wipe any sort of debris off of those uh, that I can and then we'll go from there but I have them in order that I took them out here and I'm gonna put them back in in that order I don't know if you have to but I'm going to so real quick I want to show you what I do to go the extra mile personally I don't think it's the extra mile I've done it on all of my other cars I do it anytime I, I'm dealing with some lighting or whatever but uh, I use dielectric grease here okay it's not very expensive, but it's for electrical components in your car. I just take a little bit of this and on the coil down here in the opening, I'll just put some here, just a little bit. You don't have to go crazy. And then I also around the seal where it seals at the top, I'll put some here, just a little bit on that. It just keeps moisture out and ensures a better electrical connection. So you don't have to do it, but I do how I roll so I'm gonna do that with each one now we're gonna go take the spark plugs out look at those and put the new ones in so now we're gonna get these spark plugs out so I have my magnet it's magnetic deep well for spark plugs so uh, when you pull the spark plug out it kind of stays into this and you can pull it out and it doesn't drop back down it also helps with putting them back in so you don't damage the spark plug like the electrode or whatever by dropping it when you're putting it in so this is 5 8 on a 3 8 ratchet Let's start getting them out. In there, we have a lot of room. I should have an extension. So what I did is I added an extension because it is deeper than I thought it was. So if that's all you, if you have a little extension, just add it on there. This wasn't quite long enough. So just stick it in there, pull around, hook it in, and there it is. We'll see how this magnet works when I pull it out. You can pick them up at auto parts stores. They're pretty popular. The fine threads, a lot of them. All right, there it is. See how that sticks in there? It just stays, it's magnetic. So there's your spark plug. Boom, and those look pretty good. They really do. So let's, uh, let's get the rest of them out. And we'll get them in. 2,000 years later. All right, the plugs are out. The other ones have been checked for a gap, as I mentioned earlier. Let's get them put in. So as I said before, what's nice about this being magnetic is... Um, put that in and it stays in it stays in it doesn't drop out and that's good because you don't want to damage this that if it if it falls in that hole and it hits bottom it could change the gap on the plug definitely don't want to do that so let's get these things in now what I recommend is always just get it hand tight uh, don't uh, as a matter of fact I'm just gonna do that because you don't want to cross thread it because if you do that that's a whole big mess that you don't want any part of. So just get them tightened down, okay? So that's hand tight right there. Do the same thing for the other three, and then we're gonna do our torque wrench. Get them torqued down to spec. All right, now it's time to torque these spark plugs down. I have a torque wrench. Uh, you want 18 to 20 foot pounds of torque. I'm gonna go in between about 19. Uh, you want to make sure you crush that brand new crush washer that comes on the spark plugs. So I'm going to go about 19. Let's see how that works on each one. Now I do have them all hand tight. I'm going to use the same magnetic extension just because I already have it. Uh, it will work just fine. So put that on and let's go. So it's set for 19 foot pounds. So you want to hold the end. That's it. 
All right, do the next one. So hopefully you have a torque wrench. Now you can get by without using one, but you wanna be real careful. You wanna to try to get everything how it's supposed to be. You really do. Um, especially with the tolerances and everything that they have in the motors today. Back in the old days, man, I would just tighten it until I felt it was tight enough, you know, and it worked. But now you kind of want to go off the specs. So 18 to 20 pounds is what we're getting online here. Um, so I'm going right in between. We'll get those tightened down. We're going to reinstall install the, um, the wire harness, uh, the coils, everything. Get everything hooked back up and uh, we'll give it a test. All right. So my coil, it's clean. I cleaned it up. Looks good. It didn't take much. I just basically wiped it off. So uh, just because I didn't want anything to collect when it's dielectric grease. And that's also why I wiped up the openings there. Um, you don't want any dust or particles getting in between the, the seal. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this straight down. Move the harness out of the way. There we go. Now this is where you have to be really careful with these. Want to kind of hold this in place. And don't force anything. Literally, do not force anything. There has to be a reason you're forcing something like that. So take it out, take your time, no hurry. Just don't force those because I'm telling you, they will cross thread. All right, so, so you get your 10 millimeter again, and you just Tighten these up nice and snug because when I took them off, they were just nice and snug. Just tighten it and then maybe get an eighth of a turn on it after that. That's it. So that should be fine. Do that with all of them. And then we're going to hook the ground up. Three days later. <laughs> All right, we have those tightened up. They look really good. They're nice and seated. Let's get our ground wires hooked up. So we'll put your ground wire here. Take your 10 millimeter nut, put it on top. And down. Once again, don't over tighten it. Don't over tighten it. But you want a nice ground, of course, so you want to get it good and snug. Okay, like that. Do the same thing with all four. I won't bore you with that part. We'll get back to putting the wiring harness on after I do this. All right, the ground wires are all tight, nice and snug, everything's secure. Now we have to put the wiring harness back on. Uh, you just have to line it up here. You kind of want to do it on all at the same time. You don't want to bend it, it's plastic. So this is kind of in the way. You just have to maneuver it. There we go. Just maneuver it and Get them snapped down. There we go. You'll hear them snap into place. It's a faint sound, but I just want to test them to make sure that they're not loose. And they're not. Okay, so that's done. I'm gonna put a new zip tie here. That's easy. Uh, everything is secure. We have this one thing here. This little bracket I disconnected just to get some more flexibility that back on that's done all right that's how you change the spark plugs all we have to do now is start it up and see if it runs all right it's been running for about five minutes it sounds great it feels great i gave it some gas it just uh, it feels just as smooth as she ever did so don't forget to put your couple back on Hey guys, if you have any questions about this install I did today, put some comments down below. I'll be sure to get back to you. And also, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. You guys should check out the rest of my videos from lighting to uh, interior lights, headlights, high beams, reverse lights, all that stuff, and a bunch of other maintenance things that I've already posted on my channel. So if you subscribe, you'll be able to see all those things. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you, and we'll see you next time.